Hello everyone, and welcome to MACTAC's presentation, Pressure Sensitive versus Structural Adhesives for Building and Construction. Before we begin, let's quickly look at what topics we will cover in this webinar. First, I'll give a brief introduction of myself and MACTAC. Then we will cover some background information of structural and pressure sensitive adhesives, followed by a review of the various types of tape constructions that are available. We'll look at some applications and markets where tapes are used, and then we'll wrap up with a more in-depth look at MACTAC capabilities. So first, introductions. My name is Steve Schroff, and I'm a business development chemist. I've been in the adhesive industry for 21 years, the past 18 which have been at MACTAC, and throughout the years I've held various chemist and engineering roles at the companies I worked at. I have way too many hobbies that I can ever keep up with. They vary from gardening to camping to woodworking to 4x4ing to competitive shooting. I even have a 15-gallon distillery and brewing, uh, beer brewing system in my basement, which is actually pretty sweet. But by far, my favorite hobby is Frisbee golf. Every time I travel somewhere for work, I make sure I pack some discs with me. Uh, because of that, I've been able to play over 500 courses in 42 states and seven different countries. Last and not least, I have a rescue pup named Laser who completely and utterly dominates every aspect of my life. Not only does he have his own room in my house that's completely decorated in Paw Patrol theme, Marshall's his favorite character, in case you're wondering. Uh, he has his own little doggy jungle gym and agility course in the backyard. He is a total celebrity here in the Greater Stowe area. There's not a single burger joint, ice cream stand, or drive through that does not know him by name, and they always have snacks and treats ready for him for when he stops by. His favorite hobby is car car rides, and so I bought him his own convertible so that he can get the full effect of the wind blowing through his fur. A little background about MacTac. We're headquartered in Stowe, Ohio, which is the northeast quadrant of the state, just below Cleveland. We were founded here in 1959, and we have manufacturing facilities in Scranton, Pennsylvania, and Columbus, Indiana, as well as several distribution and finishing facilities across the United States and Mexico. Recently, we purchased Retrauma's U.S.-based operations, further pushing our manufacturing footprint into Minneapolis, Minnesota, as well as more South Carolina. In 2016, we were acquired and became part of the Lintec company. They are a pressure-sensitive adhesive company just like MACTAC, headquartered in Tokyo, Japan. Last year, they did $2.5 billion in annual sales. Around the globe, they have 40 subsidiaries, with MACTAC being their North America flagship. Globally, they employ about 4,800 employees, with approximately 800 of those employees in the United States. Adhesive background. When building or assembling something, you will inevitably need to attach two pieces or materials together. Methods doing this include welding, soldering, or brazing if you're working with metals, mechanical fasteners such as nails, screws, rivets, bolts, etc., or what we'll be focusing on today, adhesives. Adhesives as a whole are defined as non-metallic substances used to bond two materials together through surface attachment and resist their separation. As the title of the talk suggests, there are two main classifications of adhesives, structural and pressure sensitive. Adhesive use is continuously growing year over year in all markets and especially in building construction. That is because adhesives offer many advantages over other methods of attachment. For example, no special skills or training is needed to apply adhesives. That's how I got into this industry. But unlike being a welder or an electrician or a plumber, there is no skilled trade labor for adhesive application. Anybody's capable of doing it. Another reason why adhesive use is growing and why they're continuously displacing mechanical fasteners is because they offer a cost savings, not only in materials, but also an increased productivity. Adhesives are capable of bonding different materials together, unlike welding, which is limited to metals. You can't weld metal to plastic or glass, and with glass, it's very difficult to use mechanical fasteners for assembly. It's very common for adhesives to be used in conjunction with mechanical fasteners. There are a lot of reasons for this, but the biggest one is adhesive spreads the stresses across a larger area instead of concentrating them in a localized spot. So instead of all the load concentrated at a nail or a screw, the load is dispersed over the area where the adhesive is applied. This can be several square inches or even several square feet. This prevents stress fractures or deformations from forming in the material around a mechanical fastener. Any woodworkers probably heard the phrase, for best results, glue and screw. 
adhesives not only bond surfaces together, but also provide a seal simultaneously, keeping out fluids, particulates, and gases. Adhesives allow for a clean look, giving better aesthetics than nails or screw heads showing or deformations caused in the materials by welding. And adhesives can reduce the overall weight of materials being used. So now let's talk about structural adhesives. First, what are they specifically? It's a broad term that covers many different types and brands. They are defined as adhesives which are applied in a fluid state and wet across one or both surfaces being adhered, and then hardened by drying, cooling, curing, or a combination thereof, forming a permanent bond. To better explain this, for adhesives to work, they need to be able to spread out across the surfaces they are adhering to, or what we call wet out. The more surface area an adhesive covers, the better the bond. Structural adhesives wet out while they are a liquid. Then they harden to a solid, and this is what keeps the materials secured together. A key point here is once they harden, they cannot form a bond. So if you apply adhesive, get distracted, and the adhesive cures, it will need to be removed and a fresh adhesive applied. Some structural adhesives only allow for a few seconds dwell time before they cure. Examples of structural adhesives include Elmer's glue, wood glue, super glue, hot melt glue guns, liquid nails, epoxies, urethanes, and even mortar. A lot of caulks and sealants and paints are very similar to structural adhesives, the only difference being is that they're not being used to adhere two surfaces together. If I had to pick one area where structural adhesives really excel at, it would be they are really good at holding large loads for prolonged periods of time. A great example of this is roadway tunnels. Uh, epoxies are used to secure anchors, which are then used to suspend the massive concrete slabs that form the inner facade of the tunnel. These blocks or slabs can weigh several tons each. There's a lot of uses for duct tape, but this just is not one of them. Now, in contrast to structural adhesives, there are pressure sensitive adhesives, or PSAs for short. These are adhesives that I will be focusing on today. They are defined as adhesives which are capable of wetting a surface and forming a permanent bond with the application of pressure alone. With a PSA tape, in order to form a bond, all you need to do is press down on it, hence the word pressure in the name. As such, they are always tacky. Touch any tape and it's always sticky. With a PSA tape, you can apply it to one surface and if you're easily distracted, such as myself, completely forget what you're doing, come back a day or so later and finish the job. This is why I do PSAs and not structural adhesives because on most days I'm like laser when he sees a squirrel. Examples of these include tapes, all kinds of them, electrical, duct, seaming, packaging, scotch, masking tapes, uh, stickers and labels, all are pressure sensitive adhesive products. If I had to pick one area where pressure sensitive adhesives really excel at, it's impact resist resistance or sudden shocks. There are a lot of great videos on YouTube showing this. One of my favorites is, is that they put different road signs into wind tunnels to simulate the winds during tropical storms or hurricanes. And the problem is, is that when the winds really start to pick up, the signs are constantly vibrating and getting suddenly, you know, jarred around and shocked. And the mechanical fasteners, the bolts that they use, are always breaking off and shearing. So now they use either adhesives or they use adhesives with bolts because with the adhesive, you can pound it as much as you want and it's just not going to break. I teach a lot of classes for the Pressure Sensitive Tape Council. And one of the demonstrations we do is we do a lap shear with some pieces of steel, you know, lap them over top of each other and bond them with a structural adhesive and epoxy and a pressure sensitive adhesive. And with the epoxy, you can slam it on a table and it will just shatter because they're very hard. With the PSA, you can stand there and whack it all day. It will never break. Conversely, if you try to pry the uh, structural adhesive apart, the epoxy, you'll never get it done. You need hydraulics to do that. Uh, with the pressure sensitive adhesive, it will take a lot of time and effort, but eventually you can pry those apart. And again, that's the main difference between PSAs and structural adhesives. Now we're going to focus in more on PSAs and how they work. They are part of a very unique family of polymer compounds known as viscoelastic materials. A fancy term which simply stated means that they behave both as a liquid and a solid simultaneously. Many of these types of materials exist in our everyday lives, but the most famous example would have to be Silly Putty. Most people probably played with Silly Putty as a kid, except for me, because I had older siblings who got Silly Putty, Play-Doh, and Chewing Gum banned by my parents before I was even born, but I digress. Now, Silly Putty is a soft material, but certainly does not really resemble a liquid. 
at first. But if you roll it up into a ball and let it sit, it will slowly flow out across the surface like a fluid and be flat after about mm, 20 minutes. Or if you press on it, you can get it to flow out faster. This is the visco or fluid component of the adhesive and it's responsible for wetting out across the surface to form a bond. The other component is the elastic or solid phase, which is where an adhesive strength comes from and is really responsible for maintaining the bond between the two substrates or surfaces. Again, the key takeaway here is that PSAs are always tacky and the reason is because they are always capable of wetting out across the surface with the application of pressure in order to form a bond. There are three main chemistries of PSAs, acrylic, rubber, and silicone. You don't really see silicone in building and construction, mainly because they're five to ten times the price of the other two, and there's not a lot of applications that require 600F and temperature resistance. So really the two you see and we'll focus on today are acrylic and rubber. A question I always get asked a lot is, is that which chemistry do I select between them? Uh, there is no real good answer, uh, no universal answer, so as I go through applications to today, I will just mention which adhesives are typically used and why. Earlier I covered the advantages that adhesives offer, but PSAs offer additional advantages to those previously mentioned. For one, they're extremely easy to use. There's no instructions to follow for applications, no weighing or mixing needed. Just unwind it, tear it off, and apply it. No special mixing or application equipment is needed. No rollers or brushes or application guns or anything like that. The bond of a PSA is instant, so there's no waiting for curing or setting. Some structural adhesives require 72 hours to properly dry and set. This leads to decreased insulation times. Many structural adhesives are solvent based and have a strong chemical smell, especially true in flooring where they're being applied inside with poor ventilation. Because they are soft and can flow, they can allow for materials to expand and contract without fracturing. And if they do pop apart, since they are always tacky, it is possible for the bond to reform. And they have vibration dampening, which is good for acoustical properties and noise reduction. Now we're going to look at some of the various types of tape constructions that exist. The first construction is the simplest. The traditional single coated tape, which involves just a carrier and adhesive. There are many different carriers that can be used and many different applications you can find these tapes. For example, polyester carriers are typically used in packaging tapes. Paper carriers are your traditional painter's tapes or masking tapes. Polyolefin or plastics are traditionally used or seen in building instruction as your seaming tapes for house wraps. Cloth tapes are used as gaffer tapes or duct tapes. And vinyl carriers are what your electrical tapes are constructed out of. The next adhesive construction we're going to look at is the single coated laminate. It's very similar to the single coated tape we just looked at, except for in addition to the carrier and adhesive, it has a release liner, sometimes referred to as a protective paper or a protective film. This needs to be removed before the adhesive can be applied. Now in the PSA world, there's a lot of different reasons why we use these release liners. However, I won't be covering those today. There's many different applications and carriers used here uh, for HVAC joining tapes. This is your FSKs and your foil type tapes. Uh, you see a lot of flashing tapes are this construction. They use foils and metallized films as the carrier. Moisture barriers. This is your self inherent type moisture barriers, both woven and non-woven type membranes. Roofing underlayment membranes. This is your TPO materials that go underneath the shingles that get nailed in. Gasket or weather barrier. These are typically foams and you see these around doors and windows. And then labels, decals, and stickers. Various types of faces here. PET, PVC, TPOs, and papers. The next construction is the double-sided tape. Here you have a release liner and a carrier that's coated on both sides with an adhesive. You typically use this type of tape when you're trying to stick two materials together. Applications and carriers include foam carriers. This can be used in the mounting of signage, such as ADA fixtures, bathroom fixtures, decorative facades, or glazing tapes for windows. Polyester carriers is another common type. Uh, this can be used for foam adhesion that's used in insulation, or it could be used in flooring. Tissue or paper carriers, this is commonly used in carpet and flooring. The advantage of this is, is that they can be torn by hand. There's no need for any type of a knife or scissors to cut them. And then scrim or non-woven uh, non type materials, and these are commonly used in the carpeting industry. 
The last tape construction we're going to look at is the transfer adhesive tape. This is comprised of just adhesive on a liner. It too is used to bond two materials together, however there is no carrier. Applications for this type of tape include foam adhesion. This is a foam adhesion for both noise and weather insulation. Pipe jacketing, this is usually used as the closure after it's been wrapped around the pipe. Now this construction is not too commonly seen or applied in the field. Typically this type of tape is used at the OEM level on OEM parts, such as the actual furnace itself or air conditioning units or blower units. Applications and markets. PSAs are being utilized in both residential and commercial roofing systems, and their use continues to grow each year. This is mainly because of the PSA's ability to make the materials used in these applications more resilient against the elements, and they can significantly reduce the insulation time versus structural adhesives. In residential roofing, pressure-sensitive adhesives are being used to replace traditional tar paper with adhesive-coated synthetic membranes. Many building codes are now requiring at least the first one-third of the roof uses a PSA underlayment, especially in areas that are prone to hurricanes or cold weather where ice dams occur. These adhesives are traditionally rubber-based adhesives. They're hydrophobic, which means they repel water. This also prevents capillary action from allowing water to seep underneath the shingle and the membrane itself. Rubber-based adhesives can be coated at much higher thicknesses. This allows for better adhesion to the MDO board underneath, as well as sealability around the nail that's been driven through the membrane from the shingles above. There's also a lot more self-adhesive shingles being sold. However, these are primarily used for repair right now and not new roof installations. In commercial roofing, where a lot of EPDM and now TPO membranes are being used, these are typically flat roofs that have standing water, PSA-coated membranes are growing in popularity. They are replacing the need to apply structural adhesives at the job site for simplicity and increased productivity. And with these types of roof systems, you want to reduce or eliminate mechanical fasteners, which create entryways for water. Both rubber and acrylic adhesives are used for various reasons, and MacTac offers some very unique options for this market that combines the best of both worlds. PSAs are also used in seaming tapes for joints with these types of roof systems, and for patches when holes occur. One of the more well-known markets for pressure-sensitive adhesive tapes is the HVAC market. That's because this is a market where the applications just aren't practical for structural-based adhesives. FSK, ASJ, and foil tapes have been used in this market for decades. These are single-coated tapes. They are comprised of a paper, a scrim, and a foil laminated together and coated with an adhesive. Typically, these adhesives are acrylic because of the higher temperatures involved. Rubbers do not have good temperature resistance on the high end. They can be used for sealing of joints. In terms of pipe jackets, they can be used as closures. Again, these can be double coated or transfer tapes as the self-closure systems. Or with pipe jackets, they can be joint sealing tapes as well. Again, they're typically acrylics because of the higher temperatures that are involved. And you see a lot of these types of tapes in the OEM units, again, in the air conditioning or the actual furnace units themselves. Next market we're going to look at is weather membranes, and the first application is seaming tapes for residential house wraps. This is the tapes that are used to close the seams after the house wraps have been tacked up by nails or staples to the walls of the building. They're traditional in tape form and can be either acrylic or rubber-based adhesives on a polycarrier. It really comes down to what does the manufacturer make more economically. I think rubbers are better for this application because they stick to a wider variety of membranes. However, some manufacturers simply produce acrylics more efficiently, and in this market, it's all about the price. Then there's self-adhered membranes, which are actually PSA coated. These are used where mechanical fasteners aren't possible, such as mason block or concrete, usually found on walls or foundations. Above grade membranes are a lot like Gore-Tex and they keep the liquid water out but allow water vapor to pass through or breathe. These adhesives must be acrylic. This is a function of acrylic adhesives. Rubber-based adhesives repel water, but acrylics will allow for water vapor to pass through while keeping bulk liquid water out. Below grades are usually vapor retarders, and these are usually rubber PSAs because rubber PSAs reject all water, either liquid or water vapor. Flooring is a continuously and rapidly growing market for pressure-sensitive adhesive tapes, and carpet tapes is probably the oldest application in this market. 
Tapes can be used to replace nailing strips, which is especially helpful in preventing situations where your parents cover up beautiful hardwood floors with hideous carpeting and it has to get torn out and then requires the repair and restoring of the floor where the tack strips were used. Adhesive tapes can also be used as seams where carpet pieces butt up against each other and also patches where carpet needs to be repaired or replaced. Carpet tapes also offer a variety of service lives. They can last for decades or they can last for a few days. A good example of this is trade shows. All that carpet gets taped down to prevent it from lifting and causing a tripping hazard. And three, four days later, it's all peeled up and reused again. These tapes are double-sided and can use a variety of carriers such as films, papers, or scrims. They are typically rubber-based because of the high coat thicknesses that are available. For rubber based adhesives and thus offer high flow ability to wet out the subfloor underneath and the textured carpet backside. The fastest growing segment in the flooring market for pressure sensitive tapes is tiles or piece flooring. This is in part due to the popularity of the various types of rubber flooring now available vinyl flooring made to look like false stone or wood, laminate flooring, carpet tiles as opposed to wide rolls, linoleum tiles, and many other types of flooring but it's mostly because the advantages that PSAs offer over structural adhesives. Many structural adhesives require 48 to 72 hours to cure, during which the floor cannot be walked on. Flooring using PSA tapes can be walked on as soon as the tile is placed down. Many of these structural adhesives are solvent-based, and they fill the building full of a chemical odor. And PSA offers a time savings because the flooring and the adhesive is laid down in one step as opposed to multiple steps. When you go to tear up the floor and remodel, the cleanup of PSAs is much easier. One thing to consider is, is that although many residential homes might only change the flooring every 15 to 25 years, or never if you're like my family, many businesses remodel their look as soon as three to five years after installation. Also, floors that have been put down with pressure-sensitive tapes are easier to repair or replace sections that have been damaged. The adhesives used here could be rubber or acrylic based. It's usually determined by the type of flooring that's used. Rubber flooring typically uses rubber adhesives because it adheres better to the flooring material, whereas vinyl flooring, because of all the plasticizers that migrate, require acrylic adhesives be used. The final segment in the flooring market where pressure sensitive tapes are used is underlayment. A lot of modern day constructions are using various types of flooring underlayments for sound abatement. With respect to wood or laminate flooring, it's usually to stop squeaks. When it comes to poured floors, it's to stop sound from transmitting between units. Pressure sensitive tapes are used to hold thermal insulation in place until the floor is actually applied, or it's used to hold down radiant heating when it's been installed underneath the floor. If the floor has been poured directly on a concrete pad, there's probably a vapor barrier under there, and the pressure sensitive tape is used to hold that in place until the flooring is applied. Pressure sensitive tapes can be found all around doors or windows. Perhaps the best known application be flashing tapes. Just like roofing membranes, these are usually rubber because of the heavy thicknesses that can be coated, and they seal up around nails once they've been driven through. When building high efficiency or insulated glass units, tapes are used to hold the panes of glass during the construction. And since it's so hard to use mechanical fasteners on glass, glazing tapes hold the glass directly to the frame of the window itself. Mutton bars go on top of the glass to create simulated divided lines. All three of these applications require acrylic adhesives because of the UV resistance they provide. All around doors and windows, you could find various types of weather seals. Modern day doors are filled with acoustical and thermal insulation and they have hardware attached such as kick plates and knock plates with tape rather than mechanical fasteners for aesthetic reasons. A lot of business interiors and high end homes are starting to move away from boring painted walls and incorporate more elegant and lively facades into their decor. False wood and stone tiles are very popular right now and these are PSA backed in order to eliminate unsightly nail holes. More and more commercial buildings are going with architectural panels of various designs and shapes instead of bland painted walls as part of their interior decor. You'll find a lot of trim and baseboards nowadays are applied with PSA tapes because of ease of installation and aesthetics. 
acoustical panels and acoustical materials are moving towards PSA. This is because PSAs offer, offer better vibrational dampening and helps with the sound reduction. There are time saver versus structural adhesives. And in a lot of cases, mechanical fasteners really just aren't suitable for these types of fragile materials. The final applications I'm going to talk about today are fixtures. In commercial restrooms, pressure-sensitive tapes can be found all over. These are usually used in the back of soap dispensers, paper towel dispensers, air fresheners, and urinal drips. The reason why is, is that they offer time savings over mechanical fasteners. In order to use a mechanical fasteners, you would most likely have to drill through tile or a mirror in order to hang the, fi uh, the fixture. With pressure-sensitive tapes, the fixture can be hanged directly to the facade that's there without any drilling. The same could be said for soap and shampoo dispensers now being installed in hotels across America. Lighting fixtures, in particular LED, use pressure-sensitive tapes to actually hold the lighting elements. ADA signage, name plates, all these are held up with PSA tapes, again because of the ease of which they're applied and they could be applied to any facade without drilling. Bumper-ons or bumpers used to protect walls from doors also use pressure-sensitive adhesive. They actually work better than mechanical fasteners because mechanical fasteners eventually will break free, whereas adhesives will not. All these types of applications usually require some type of double-coated foam tape. This is because usually you're sticking two rigid materials together and you need the foam there to fill the gaps between the two. Now I'm going to talk a little bit more in depth about MACTAC's capabilities. MACTAC is a pressure sensitive adhesive manufacturer and tape coater. We're actually quite unique in that most tape coaters buy their adhesives from third party vendors, whereas MACTAC makes most of their adhesives that they coat internally. We specialize in 100% solids adhesive formulations, which I'll cover shortly in more detail. Every year, Adhesives and Sealants Magazine, in an independent publication, ranks all the manufacturers of adhesives and sealants and rates them based off output. Last year, we ranked number 16, which is quite impressive when you consider we only make pressure-sensitive adhesives, and these adhesives are predominantly used for our own internal use. Last year, we produced about 25 million pounds annually. For making adhesives, we have continuous extrusion and batch compounding capabilities, and for coating tapes, we have multiple adhesive platforms that we can utilize. This includes hot melt rubber, UV acrylic, solvent acrylic and solvent rubber, as well as aqueous-based systems. So why does MACTAC specialize in 100% solids and adhesives? Well, first and foremost, it's a way to differentiate ourselves amongst everybody else in the world. There are approximately 75 to 100 tape and laminate manufacturers in the world, but there are only 10 adhesive manufacturers. When you start breaking it down, it's actually worse. When it comes to solvent acrylic adhesives, which are used a lot in B&C market, there's really only two players out there, and they supply about 95% in the entire world of solvent acrylic adhesives. When you're talking about hot melt adhesives, there's three suppliers out there. The other five suppliers out there or so, they're supplying emulsion-based adhesives, which aren't really predominantly used in the building and construction arena. So really, all these, all these tape manufacturers are buying from the same pot, and we want it to be different. Secondly is efficiency. Because there's nothing to dry, since they're 100% solids, we can run two to five times the coating speeds that solution-based adhesives do. We also use less energy because we have no ovens. Again, these solution-based adhesives require ovens that could be three, 400 feet in length, and they're all fired off of natural gas. When we upgrade it and stop coating solvent-based adhesives and went to a 100% solids platform, we build a new coater, and this new coater is capable of coating 100% solids two sides in one pass. So most manufacturers, when they make a double-sided tape, they coat one side, they bring back the web, rewind it, and then coat the second side. We are capable of coating both sides in one pass at two to three times or two to five times what everybody else is doing. Also, 100% solids adhesives do offer some unique properties. We, they allow for us to coat heavier depositions. Again, there's a limit to what you can dry and get a good adhesive product out. When it comes to 100% solids, you're really only limited to pump speed and how much adhesive you can physically deliver to the web. There are no VOCs, since there was never any solvent there, and this is becoming more and more important. And also, there's no outgassing. 
100% solids adhesives are green and sustainable technology and manufacturing practices. This is becoming more and more important every day. And it's also a sustainable technology and green manufacturing process that does not cost more money. In fact, a lot of times these are more cost effective than the other methods. Since MACTAC is manufacturing its own adhesives, this allows for us to create custom formulations to meet specific applications. This is opposed to buying an off-the-shelf adhesive that was made to have broad market appeal and trying to make it work in these applications. Here are some of the recent adhesive innovations MACTAC's created for the building and construction industry. We have a new line of cold temperature products, and they feature an adhesive that will adhere down to negative 20 degrees Fahrenheit. It will also adhere to wet surfaces and low surface energy materials, and it will adhere to wet low surface energy materials that are at negative 20 degrees Fahrenheit. These are the three worst case scenarios for an adhesive tape, and we solved all three simultaneously with one product. We've also created a line of high strength adhesives. These adhesives offer the highest shear available on the market and the best holding power. In order to measure the strength of these products, we had to use 10 times the weight normally used in these types of evaluations. This PSA offers the closest properties to a structural adhesive than any other PSA on the market. And not only is it super strong, it's also got excellent adhesion properties to a wide range of substrates, including low surface energy materials. We've also recently launched a line of products known as Rubber Rivet. These are heavy deposition tapes, coated up to 50 mils thick, that offer extreme peel, tack, and shear. They can offer 30 pounds of peel, which is almost unheard of for any tape product. And in the near future, we'll be launching a new line of HVAC tapes. We're not really reinventing the wheel here, but we've created some innovations around the manufacturing process, which should allow us to manufacture these types of products far more efficiently than anyone else. Well, this concludes our talk for today. If you'd like to learn more about pressure-sensitive adhesives, you can always visit our blog on the website or on YouTube. Each month, we put out a different video discussing the attributes and applications for adhesives. You can also visit our website for more information and resources, mactac.com slash industrial tapes. We're going to take questions next, but down the road, should you have any additional questions that might come up, you can always email us at mactac.americas at mactac.com or reach out on the number provided below. So at this time, we'll open it up to any questions that you might have.